good morning guys welcome to today's video sam is busy at work he got a huge delivery of wood the other day and i'm excited to see what you're doing oh, wow it's nice sam i love it he's been out here working all day this farm has been like such a blessing in terms of work like it's fun work it's amazing work you're not having fun hmm. So what are you gonna put here? Are you gonna put like another gate? Uh, wood. What? There's water traps going here. I like it, I like this. This is so much nicer. I'm not gonna lie, I always hated this panel. Anyway, welcome back to today's video. Today is just another day on the day by day farm. <laughs> just another day without Chino. Clearly the chickens have been in here, I'll show you. Can you guys see? <laughs> they come back here. Remember I said I didn't wanna lift up all this this hay because it just was so much work lifting it all off the other area in the barn. I left it and the chickens come out and they're digging through it. So the trees are all starting to change but they're not quite changed yet. I'm excited though. One day this is going to be a, a sea of reds and yellows and oranges and it's going to be stunning. Buying horses. The color on my camera is all messed up we had to reset the camera now i have to reset it back to all the colors that i'm used to but having horses literally is really stressful and even though you think like when you buy a horse and you bring it home it's the most exciting thing it's not there's so much stress that comes with bringing home a horse stress of the stress of is he the right one the stress of How's he gonna fit in the herd? The stress of the honeymoon period. There's this honeymoon period that happens with horses and it feels amazing and awesome when you try the horse, no matter how many times you try the horse, but once the horse settles in, suddenly the horse is like got its own opinions. It's, it's a real thing. And then there's the stress of learning that horse so like there's always a learning curve with every horse and i don't just mean riding i mean in all sorts of ways keeping the horse they all have their different little things that they like and getting the horse to be happy like it's horses getting new horses is a lot but i'm ready we've stepped into the journey and i have a big question i want to ask you guys all right why is everybody down there but Penny's up here. There's no grass up here for you, Pen. What's wrong? Hey? Bugs bothering you? Storm bothering you? I brought you a Sophie's treat. You like those things? Yeah. Anyway, my question is... I always like to make sure she's doing okay. Um, so I was talking, a friend, talking to a friend today that has oh, a horse for sale. And I was asking her about him and she said that he's very much a push ride. And it got me thinking, what kind of horse do you like? Do you like a push ride or do you like a pull ride? So if we say that a pull ride is a horse that goes and has an engine and then you have to use your upper body and pull them back every once in a while with lots of half halts, kind of like Finn. Finn was a pull ride. Or, she's got a little scar here from storm even mean to you hey or do you like a push ride i know a lot of people who are just learning to ride like a push ride it's a horse that you have to start their engine get their engine going it requires a lot of leg and i've been reading and people are so divided in that it makes me wonder if like people who have really really strong lower legs if they prefer a push ride versus people who have more upper body strength and feel like they have more control by pulling. It's not, I've learned that it's not specifics, it's not specific to beginner versus experience, that all beginners have to have a push ride and all experienced people prefer pull rides. I have learned that it's a very specific decision. So I love a pull ride. I love to have the power in the top of me to like half halt and to slow them down. I feel better. I do not have any lower leg at all, strength at all. And I know Sophie loves a pull ride. Gabby, on the other hand, much prefers a 
push rod. She likes to start the engine and get the engine going. She feels like she has more control that way. So that's my question to you guys. Which do you prefer, a push rod or a pull rod? A push rod where you have to squeeze and start the engine yourself, get the engine going, like Chino was a push rod and like Storm is a push rod, but Chino is less of a push rod. Or do you prefer a, a pull rod like Finn and like Gray Finn? Comment below. I'm really curious to see if we're split on this and what level of riding you're at. Too. Also tell me if you're a beginner and what you prefer and if you're a, uh, an experienced rider and what you prefer. So I want to bring out my clippers and clean out this shelter <laughs> because it is really awful up here. These are all prickly bushes. The horse that we end up buying for Gabby is going to be her very first ever not beginner horse. So she has like a little bit of leeway in horses that she can try and horses that she can look at. But like I said, I'm not rushing her. Well, hello. It's nice to meet you over in the horse field. I feel really got bad for these guys because they loved being up with Chino and Willow. <laughs> they loved Chino and Willow and the other horses are not as kind. Right? They followed me. <laughs> they are so adorable. They're so adorable. Anyone keeping up on the pea fowl journey, <laughs> we are struggling. We're doing better though today than we have been. There's still not a lot of poop going on, but there's more poop than has been going on. So we discovered that they need to be able to run, run, run. They eat so much better when we're with them, when we take them out and we let them run around on the floor. So basically they run for a lap, take three bites. Run for a lap, take three bites. So this is what we're gonna try. I'm gonna put um, some of this stuff on top of this thing. They could obviously still get out through one of these big holes, but hopefully they don't figure out that they can do that. Um, we put a heated pad underneath here because they really do like to be warm. So hopefully that'll help. And we did something else. I can't wait to show you when the other little guy, if you guys remember the other little guy had a bad foot and we decided today to try and fix it. We ended up splinting it today just to see. We just wanted to see how it would work. <laughs> and she walks so much better. She does trip a little more because she's not used to it, but she actually walks upright. She's All right, it's hard for her to balance still, but she actually does so much better with a splint on. She or he. So anyways, we're gonna keep it splinted for a few days and see if it helps. I definitely think that it will. But this is the update for the peafowl. We're doing so much better with them in terms of getting them to eat. They're, Sophie's trying to feed it a bug. That's disgusting. Yeah, don't eat that. Um, we are actually getting them to eat from their bowls and drink from their bowls without us even trying to f teach them how to do it. So that's impressive. They're still eating uh, eating boiled egg and kitten food. Sleeping on the job, are you? You're having a rest? Yeah. So we're gonna practice some showmanship. He ran out of wood. What's the little table here for? What the heck? I don't know, but it's cute. <laughs> it's cute. Storm, I'll take a dirty water from the water trough. <laughs> One dirty water, please. Sounds like I'll take a treat. Please. Coming up. <laughs> Wait, I'll take a treat, please. There you go, buddy. <laughs> I just appreciate Sam doing anything for us. Where's Honey? Where is she? I saw Penny coming up. Literally, Gabby just got out of bed. I called her. She's in the shower. Oh, hi, Pan. Honey! Yeah, the bugs are bad still. The bugs are bad. It's been like... So, Storm's blocking the door so they won't oh, come in. There they are. Look at Gracie's growing her winter coat. His weight is coming back up nicely. <laughs> she, she let go first. So what do you think of the new little shelf here, Pen? Storm likes it. <laughs> Run, he's gonna try and bite you. Storm already had a treat. You already had one, sorry. She's definitely darkened up a bit. The chickens are all cuddled up underneath this tree. Ellie, no. One round. She puts her, her pony 
between her and the rooster. Okay, well, I know honey will chase the rooster. <laughs> honey would for sure chase the rooster. She might be in her first heat, Sophie. A little nonsense is what I need. Now if you want to get the best of me. brought Chino to eat grass and this is where oh he got put down this is where he got put to rest from the vet and what's really amazing about the whole thing is that when we had Chino out here we were waiting for the vet and he was out here and he was eating grass we were just enjoying him and spending time with him and there was not a single soul anywhere like the other horses were down in the field the goats were gone, the goose and the duck were gone, everybody was gone. It was just us with Chino the whole entire time. And then the second the vet arrived, everybody showed up. Not the horses, but all the goats and all and the duck and the goose and they all came to be with him. And it was like so much more fitting because Chino loved the goats. Like he loved them. There were times where I'd come out into the barnyard and he would be standing there eating hay and the brown goat would be eating hay out of his mouth like he'd have it hanging out of his mouth and he'd have one half in his mouth and she'd be chewing on the other half and there were times where he would like headbutt the goats and even when he died he had a little tiny piece of missing hair just a tiny little piece of missing hair because he would headbutt them like they that's how they communicate so like they would be headbutting him and he didn't know any better, so he just would put his head down and push his head to theirs. Like, he loved the goats, and the goats came. And the duck and the goose loved him because he was kind and gentle and then chased them. And so they all came. I have a picture. If I find it, I'll show it to you guys. But at the end, everybody that he loved the most was there, except for Penny. Penny's the only one who didn't show up. But I believe everything happens for a reason and if Penny was not meant to be there then she was just not meant to be there and that's okay. Every one of his little barnyard family showed up. Why? What's happening? Our peacock is running around. Our peacock is running around. Wait for me. All right, just throw them in here. I'm just going to go in the barnyard in the farmyard. This area just looks so deserted to me. Sam's making it bigger. Wow, it's open. And they're eating more hay. Leave the dogs. Don't you even dare. I can't remember how to reset the camera. Wow. This is a lot better. I was thinking somebody mentioned a spot that we could make an arena and I didn't figure out, I couldn't figure out where they wanted it to be. What's not, what's wrong? Is it Ellie? They just squat and pee anywhere. I don't think that the goats can actually get through that. Not the big ones. Are you sure? Everybody's coming to hang with me. <laughs> Sam and I are the popular ones in the farmyard now. So the horses found the, found the new farmyard for the first time. Honey's the first one to just come wandering out here. <laughs> Do not chase my duck and goose. This is a happy place. Uh-oh. Here comes horsey number two. <laughs> Looking for her baby. They're like, what the heck? How come this is open? Don't run in here. <laughs> yeah, lots of fresh grass. The duck and the goose are running out. 
Oh, I hear Penny. <laughs> She's coming. Go away. Don't be crazy where I am. Look, you blocked my view. And like I said, they're not going to be locked into here. So I'm taking this fence post out right now. They're not going to be locked in here. This is just going to be an extension of their other fields. Like this is just an area they can come. And we know that they'll, through this winter, they'll rip up all this grass and make this all a big, huge dirt area. This is so weird for me to see the horses over here. <laughs> And just like that, Chino is gone from the property. It makes me so sad to all torn apart. I'm going to move the duck pond down to where their barn is. But I will still leave a bucket of water up here for them, even though they drink out of the horse trough. Because to them, this place has always been home. Don't you know that?